Welcome to Advanced Data Analysis 2 with me, Eric Gerhardt, Professor of Statistics at the University of New Mexico. In the next two videos, we'll be looking at an introduction to multiple regression. So here we are at the course website. I'm going to scroll down to the course notes, and here is the chapter we'll be looking at, Chapter 2. So go ahead and open up the PDF, save the R file to your computer and open it up in RStudio so you can run the code along with the examples and we'll get started. In this first half of the lecture we'll be looking at uh, a data set that has a very interesting property when we go from simple linear regression to multiple linear regression. That is when we go from one x explanatory variable to two and in the second half we'll be finding uh, uh, another, it's another example that basically shows a, a different uh, story when, when we add a second variable. So, in multiple linear regression, um, we're looking at a linear combination of two or more predictor variables, those are the x variables, that explain the variation in the response variable y. In essence, um, the additional predictors are used to explain the variation in the response that are not explained by a simple linear fit where you just have one x variable. So we'll be using uh, this example, the Indian systolic blood pressure example, and I wish I knew a, a better word than Indian to use here, but that is uh, sort of historically what this data set's name is. So anthropologists conducted a study to determine the long-term effects of an environmental change on systolic blood pressure. They measured the blood pressure of several and several other characteristics on 39 Indians who migrated from the very primitive environment high in the Andes into mainstream Peruvian society at lower altitude. So, um, all, okay, all of the Indians were at least males, at least 21 years of old, years old, and born at high altitude. So these Indians spent some portion of their life at high altitude, and then at some point they moved down to a valley, say, and then we're at low, al low altitude. And we want to know the effect on systolic blood pressure uh, based on high versus low altitude. So we start in our code by reading in the, the data set from the website. And let me go over to the website. If I scroll down to indian.dat, this is a little bit small, I apologize. open this in a new tab by pressing control and clicking. There we are. Okay. So, for example, the first person is 21 years old. They migrated one year ago. So they lived the first 20 years of their life at high altitude and the last one year at low altitude. We have their weight in kilograms, their height in millimeters, I believe, so this is this person's about 1.6 meters tall. Uh, we have some skin fold lengths for chin, forearm probably, and calf. We have their pulse rate, beats per minute, and then we have their blood pressure, the systolic and diastolic um, blood pressure values for that. So we're going to read that data table in, um, specifying header equals true because the data set did have a header line. And the default for read table is that spaces are, or any sort of white space, are the delimiter. That's going to go into Indian, and that's the data set name. So um, I always recommend looking at, immediately at the structure of a data frame or other object to uh, make sure that it's what you expect it to be. Okay, so here we've got 39 observations uh, on over 11 variables, and that's uh, meeting my expectations. We've got uh, integers and numeric. Everything's numeric of some sort in this for all the variables. We don't have any character variables, for example. If something had been miscoded, maybe there was an extra decimal point or a letter was entered in there, then one of these would, would indicate character, and that would indicate... Um, a problem with the data set, and we could go back and fix that. 
All right, um, here's a description of the variables. I'll let you uh, read through those. It's pretty much what I described previously. All right. And I just print the data set out. Lovely. All right. So the main question we are interested in is the long-term effects of environmental change in systolic blood pressure. So we had the Indians spent some fraction of their life in the new low altitude environment. How does that affect the systolic blood pressure of these men? So we're going to create a new variable. And this is not very uncommon in data analysis to have a set of variables from the original data set, but then through careful brainstorming and discussion with colleagues that you come up with a better variable that is likely to relate to uh, the response or the particular research question that you have. So here we're creating um, the fraction of their life variable. So the year age is the years since migration divided by age. So here's uh, the number of years since they migrated. So for that first person, that was one year. That first person was 21 years old. So this is one divided by 21, or just less than 4%. So this, this number is going to be 0 0.038 or something like that. Let's uh, plot the data now that we've got. We've got x as the year age fraction variable y as the systolic blood pressure and I'm going to include a label so that we can identify individuals on this plot. I'm going to just page down for a moment and we're going to look at the plot of the data before we um, look at the code for how the data were plotted. So on this left hand side we've got um, year age as the horizontal axis. Let's see hoping to get that little floaty away. Okay, anyway. Uh, along the horizontal axis, we've got year age as the variable. It, be, it can go anywhere from 0 to 1. You can have moved to the valley yesterday, or you might have been born at high altitude and moved when you were two days old. Okay, so that that's a proportion between 0 and 1. On the y-axis, we've got systolic blood pressure. And we can see I've fit a regression line, a straight um, straight line to this, and we see a decreasing slope. So the, the longer you've been, you've spent your, the longer you've spent down in the valley, the lower your systolic blood pressure is. Okay, so you've got higher blood pressure the more time you've spent at altitude on the mountain. Um, I've also added color here, so I've added a color bar, and this is the person's weight and we we know that uh, blood pressure um, is uh, partly related to weight okay uh, people who are heavier in weight tend to have higher blood, blood pressures and so if, here we've got dark colors for low weights and lighter blues for high weights and we see more dark colors near the bottom of this plot and more light colors near the top of this plot we're going to go back and look at the code in a moment, but if we take that weight variable and we make it into discrete categories of low, medium, and high for weight, we can see L's, which are red here. This is pretty small. Let me zoom in a little bit more, and then I'll zoom back out to get the whole context. So we have more L's and M's sort of low, and then the highs, the blue highs, are exclusively above the line. So there is something of a gradient um, for the weight um, as it relates to systolic blood pressure. And there's, a, there's also this decrease with age, the year age variable, with systolic blood pressure. So there's, there's relationships here with two variables, and that's what multiple regression is going to help us uncover. So just take, take a moment about plotting. That first plot we saw on the left, we uh, assigned those axes. Um, so we encoded year age as the x-axis. And in ggplot, an encoding is called an aesthetic. So we've assigned 
to the x-axis and the y-axis, the year age and systolic blood pressure. We also have this label, which is the ID variable. If we go back to the, what the data set is, here's the ID, and it's just that, uh, basically the row number for that person. We're going to add a layer onto those axes, which are points, and we're going to color those points by the person's weight. And size 2 is just increasing the, the point size so they're a little bit bigger. I've also, in, and actually that's, that's fine, those three lines make a nice scatter plot. These additions, um, geom text, I'm, here I'm adding geom text responds to the label. And H, the horizontal adjustment and the vertical adjustment make it so that, if I page down here, um, actually these are pretty subtle labels that was my intention so that we could see that this is observation four but we wanted the, I wanted the data to dominate here in the plot so if we see someone unusual like this young person who moved down the first observation who was 21 years old sort of unusually high blood pressure and but when you look at the entire plot your eyes aren't drawn to the numbers they're drawn to the points so um, in terms of data visualization, uh, here your focus is on the on the data, and but you have still have access to the the labels if you want them. Okay, page back up, zoom out. Uh, so these horizontal and vertical adjustments make the point the labels appear directly over the points. Alpha 0.25 is the opacity. So 0.25 means that uh, it's going to be pretty transparent. What this means, alpha of 0.25 is one quarter. That means that it would take four of these, num uh, these numbers to lay on top of each other before the image became completely opaque. Okay, so it has one quarter opacity. So three quarters, you can see three quarters through it or something. All right, uh, color equals two, that's giving that red color. And then the geom smooth is adding the uh, regression line. Here I've got my comment. A regression line with the confidence bands around the regression line. And then I title my plot. The second plot on the right had those categorical variables. So these lines here um, create that categorical variable. I start off by creating a new column, weight cat, which is, I'm just repeating NAs. So I'm just creating a, a column of missing values, and it has the length of the Indian data set. Then I do three things. One is I first start by assigning everyone the medium category. Then I overwrite the M. So at this point, all these weight categories are M. Then I overwrite anyone who has a weight less than 60 with an L and anyone who's greater than or equal to 70 as high. And so now I've got low, medium, and high. Finally, I want this to be an ordered factor. By default, M, L, and H would appear in alphabetical order, but I want those that order to be meaningful. So I want it to go low, medium, and high in that order. So ordered is one way to do that. And finally, um, I create the plot. And the main difference here is uh, when I have geom points, I am have colors based on the weight category rather than the weight as a numeric variable. And then I also have shapes for the weight categories. And the shapes I define manually using this scale shape manual and in this package r.oo it's it's i'm going to so i've got the letters l m and h and this is fairly a complicated um, idea here but the point is that i need to find the, the appropriate shape value that l that would actually create an l as a plot character and that's what um, all of this stuff is doing. Okay, so the point is I've got these letters that I want to use as my plot symbols, and these two lines are the way 
Oh, these two lines are the way to get the shape I want. Everything else is basically the same. So then when I come down here, I've got those three colors on my uh, in my legend, and I have the actual letters L, M, and H on my plot. So it's very easy. I mean, one nice data visualization thing here is that um, I don't actually need to refer to the legend to know whether I'm in the low, medium, or high category because the L's, M's, and H's appear right on my plot. Okay. Congratulations, we plotted the data. All right, so we've got a plot of the data. We've got this uh, basic idea that we've got uh, a decreased systolic blood pressure with year age, and we have this relationship with weight, the person's weight. So if we uh, pick, off, pick up from chapter eight from last semester, we can do a simple linear regression of the systolic blood pressure relative to the year age. That's basically the plot on the left here with the regression line and we're fitting that regression line. And when we look at year age, we see that it has a, um, well, we don't have the slope here because we're looking at the, at an ANOVA table for this, but we see that the slope is not statistically significantly different from zero, at least at an alpha or type one error 0.05 level. Okay, we have a 0 0.08 p-value, and so this slope is not not significant. If this was um, our analysis, okay, here's our negative 15 slope. If this was uh, the analysis we were doing and we were to stop here, uh, we wouldn't have found a relationship. Okay, and uh, recall how to interpret this value. In fact, this is a little tricky. Um, so what's the interpretation of the intercept of 133? That is the predicted systolic blood pressure when year age equals zero, right? If year age equals zero, all of this goes away, and that's the expected systolic blood pressure. Now, year age is a number that goes from zero to one. So negative 15 is the expected increase in systolic blood pressure for a one unit change in year age. Well, you, you never really increase a full unit in year age because that's either being born, that's, yeah, that's, that's your whole lifetime <laughs> is zero to one. So another way to think of, of, of thinking about this is say you uh, increased by one-tenth, say you spent one-tenth of your life more down in the valley, then that would be a, a decrease of 1.5. So you could just divide things by 10. Okay, so there's, you have to think about the interpretation here. 15 is a fairly big number in this context. All right, so let's take weight into consideration. So here's multiple regression. We've got a response variable on the left, and then we have more than one explanatory variable on the right. And we're going to fit a model that accounts for both year age and weight at the same time. And in R, this is a very simple procedure. In your little, in your linear model function, you simply add those variables together. So here we're adding weight to the model. And when we look at the ANOVA table for this, look at year age. It is suddenly significant, as is weight. Both of those have very small p-values. Let's keep going down. And look at a, a summary which has the uh, coefficients in here. So now we have even a, a steeper slope with with respect to year age, and we have this positive slope with respect to weight. So as your weight increases, systolic blood pressure is likely to increase. And there's lots of things to compare between these these two models. In particular, the R squared here is 0.47. Okay, almost half of the variability in systolic blood pressure is explained by this model with these two variables. If I page up to the previous model, 
um, year age was only by itself only explaining less than 8%. So we're capturing quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit more information in the second model. These hypothesis tests um, that are being done, right, we're doing t-tests, have a particular interpretation because there are other variables in the model. So year age, okay, so we, we do have this uh, significant p-value for year age, and it is significant conditional on all the other variables being in the model. So when weight is in the model, does year age explain additional variability in the response? And this p-value being small suggests yes. Even after accounting for weight, year age explains variability. Similarly, for, for the weight hypothesis test, we're asking above and beyond year age, does weight add explanatory power to the model? And in this case, it does. So both variables are important after accounting for the other variable. And this is the first time, actually, um, that some interesting things different have happened in this bottom summary table. Okay. Um, one particular item is, let's look at here. So this F statistic of 16.6 on two degrees of freedom. Historically, we've only ever had one degree of freedom down there. The one degree of freedom has always been the slope for the one predictor. But now we have two predictors. And so those are the two degrees of freedom there. Secondly, the p-value here has um, an overall, t is performing an overall test, okay? So let me page up for a moment and to relate this to the previous model. Here is the model with only year age, okay? Here the p-value um, for the slope was 0 0.088, okay? This F statistic down at the bottom is on one degree of freedom. That one degree of freedom is year age. And the test here is testing whether um, the beta coefficient equals zero for that one predictor. That one predictor because there's one degree of freedom. And so that's why this p-value, 0 0.0888, matches this one. Now what happens when we go to multiple regression, I'm going to page down, What happens in multiple regression is we have got, not in this case, we've got two variables. So we have two degrees of freedom. And the F test that's being done down here is testing whether any of these variables at all, but no, sorry, let me say that again more concisely, whether all these betas equal zero. So this p-value is testing, is the year age slope equal to zero? and is the weight slope equal to zero simultaneously. So both of them need to be equal to zero. And so this p-value says yes, at least, it's sort of like an analysis of variance hypothesis, whether everything's equal, in this case equal to zero. So this p-value rejects the null that all of the betas are equal to zero. Therefore, the alternative hypothesis is that at least one of these betas is different from zero. And so after, so your eye, the order of your eyes should jump down at the very bottom and say, do any, are any of these important? Yes. Step two, which ones are condition, which ones are important conditional on the others? And then you can interpret the individual lines. All right. I've got important note points here, and you can read through these. Um, I'm going to focus on one or two, and then we'll uh, stop this half of the video and go to the next. So from our first model, um, this was the model fit, where we just had year age, and here we have it for the second um, multiple regression. 
what is the interpretation? Notice the slope. I mean, sorry, notice the intercept, 133 down to 60. So now, what is the interpretation of the intercept, 60? That is the expected systolic blood pressure when year age equals 0 and weight equals 0. Because if both of those are equal to 0, all this is equal to 0. So that's the systolic blood pressure equals 60. What does it mean for a person's weight to be 0? Exactly. So we no longer have a, an intercept that is interpretable. That's OK. Ways to fix that would be to go back into the data set, create a new variable, and use center weight, for example. Um, center everyone at 60 kilograms or whatever sort of an average person's weight is. And then the intercept would be relative to that average person who's at 60 kilograms. OK. OK, here we've talked about already about the numbers of degrees of freedom. Um, point number three is about the sums of squares, which sort of we talked about indirectly. Number four is about r squared, which we covered. Number five is about the res residual variability, which um, I haven't mentioned. But um, in the first model, we had quite a bit more variability in the response that was not captured by the simple linear regression, and where we fit that second vari variable weight, we basically sucked up a bunch of that variability from our from our um, response. So that's one of the reasons why weight is is an important predictor here. Um, number six is about the F test, which I discussed. Number seven is. Um, about those specific t-tests being conditional on the other model variables in the model. So we covered that. Same thing with 8. Okay, very good. So um, the key idea here is about um, the relationship between those two explanatory variables in the model. In the first simple linear regression, the slope was not significant. In the second multiple re linear regression, the slope for year age was significant. And so after weight was taken into consideration, we now saw a stronger relationship with year age. And that's because all that vertical variability around the regression line what, which is measured by sigma squared, which was big initially, is now small because the variability around individual regression lines for weight um, is a much tighter relationship. I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, OK. So you can imagine uh, this is basically the model that's, that is being fit with the multiple regression. On the horizontal axis, we have year, years, year age variable. On the y-axis, we've got systolic blood pressure. And then weight basically um, has a different location um, up and down in this plot, depending on what your weight is. If you're at a low weight, you're pretty to have a low systolic blood pressure. And as your weight increases, your systolic pressure, blood pressure is expected to increase. I think it was at 1.2 for every kilogram. And so what's happening is that the variability around these individual regression lines is small, um, whereas when we had only that one regression line in the simple regression, we had all that variability for the low, medium, and high weight people. All right, let me scroll back up, understanding the model. All right, here is the line that I'm going to say over and over and over again in this semester. In multiple regression, everything depends on everything else. Whenever you are interpreting an effect in a parameter estimate table, that interpretation I'll just page up to one. 
right? The interpretation of weight being 1.2 depends on year age being in the model. If you exclude year age or if you add other variables to this model, the slope or the beta estimate for weight is going to change. Everything depends on everything else. The significance of it does. The, uh, the actual parameter estimates depend on it. Recall, for example, here, the slope for year age was negative 15 um, when it was by itself, and it became much steeper, negative 26, when weight was in there. So everything depends on everything else. All right. I will encourage you to read through the rest of this uh, narrative for these ideas. Um, the last thing I will focus on here is here is our regression model for the multiple regression. And this ability is really critical. And I'm going to stress this throughout the semester, but you, if you learn it in this lecture right now, you'll understand it. Um, um, you'll have an easier time in this class for sure. So imagine we wanted, a, what is the regression line for systolic blood pressure related to year age for a person of a specific weight? Okay? And so this relates to the, the image below that we've already seen. So you can just plug in someone's weight. Okay, what if they were 50 kilograms? So here is that equation right here. I'm going to plug in 50 for weight. This number, 50 times 1.2, uh, I don't know what that is, 60 or something, um, that gets added to the intercept, 60. right? That's just a number, that's just a number. They add together, here's 120. 1 is the intercept for people who are 50, and that's the, that's the slope for your age. So if I scroll down now, for those who are 50, uh, there's the intercept around 121, and it has that slope. And those are folks who are weight 50. And we can play that game for people of any weight. How about for people who are 60 kilograms? So we plug in 60, uh, then you get an increase of about 120. No, no, 60, 70. 72. So that 72 gets added to 60. You get 133. Same slope, though. Okay, so we just have a different intercept. We scroll down to our plot. 133. There it is. And those that's the regression line for people who are 60. So we have a separate regression line for people of any weight. That is a key idea. You could also... Um, go back to the plotting functions from the R code and swap the order um, of the axis and the color. So for example, you could plot on the x-axis the people's weights. You could have a color bar which relates to the people's years since migration. And, and then you could ask, ask, what is the regression line for systolic blood pressure of someone who spent half of their life in the valley. Okay? In that case, you put in 0.5 here. Here, let me scroll up just a little bit more. You can put in 0.5 for their year age. So that gives you about four, you know, 13. You add that to here, so you get 73, 74 as the intercept. And then you and then that 74 increases with that person's age. So you get a regression line. With where weight is on the x-axis. So you can look at this in, in different ways, but the really key point here is, is to feel comfortable plugging in for um, one of the variables a specific value and getting separate regression lines for different um, situations. Okay, <laughs> here is that plot I was talking about. Sometimes I surprise myself. So along the horizontal axis is weight. Uh, along the vertical axis we have systolic blood pressure. And the color bar here is for year age, going roughly from 0 to 
almost 0 0.9, 0 0.9 being light. And you can see it dark values near the top and it sort of trends down to light values near the bottom. Um, it goes in that decreasing direction because the slope for that parameter was negative. And so you can imagine, uh, so this is sort of the, this regression line is for the average year, year age, somewhere maybe around 0.5 or so. Um, but for people who have low year age, so around 0.2 or less, you have a regression line that's higher up here. For people who have high year age, maybe around 0.6 to 0.8, you have a regression line that's down here, lower. So you have that same pattern. All right. Um, I mentioned the word interaction here. We're going to talk about that in a later chapter. But the idea of an interaction is that the slope could change the slope of the regression line. So we've only seen example this example here where all the slopes are parallel to each other. An interaction allows the slope to change um, for different weights. You might have a different slope, not just a different intercept. I'll page back down. All right. So those are the main ideas in this first example. Basically, the, the first idea was that everything depends on everything else. We, in that initial simple linear regression, we did not have a significant relationship, but when we added weight, suddenly they were both significant. And that we can actually plot separate regression lines for conditional on one category. So on different weights, we have a different regression line. In the next example, we'll, we'll see um, a different type of uh, relationship um, happen when we add multiple variables.